The most likely answer to the question, how will we power ships in our green future, will be a mix of alternative fuels and power sources. And if a company in the south of England have anything to do with it, that will include an energy source older than shipping itself, wind. It's a big day for the Windship Technologies team at the University of Southampton's RJ Mitchell Wind Tunnel. For a century now, this tunnel has been used for testing racing cars, marine vessels and military aircraft. But today, this small, self-funded team is making fine aerodynamic adjustments to a technology that they believe could soon be on the front line in the war against climate change. Well, today what we're trying to do is improve the efficiency of the wing and basically produce more, more thrust, more, more driving force for the ship. Let's go for it. Good throw, 20. Let's go 20 meters per second, yeah, please. Today, a 1 20th scale model of the windship system's wings is being put through its paces. Painstaking testing like this, along with computational fluid dynamic modeling, have given the team confidence that this is a zero carbon propulsion system for some of the ocean's largest and thirstiest vessels in an increasingly regulated environment. Observing the tests on the scale model wings with an independent eye, is Emeritus Professor of Ship Dynamics, Philip Wilson. They are exactly the same as an aeroplane. Instead of that way, they're that way. So they don't need the massive surface area of sails, traditional sails? They're different technology. And that's an important point. This is a very different technology to using conventional sails. In spite of the name, the windship propulsion system only begins with aerodynamics. The innovative drive train system also uses an electric generator that kicks in when needed. The exhaust gases from the generator are cleaned in a carbonator and the heat from this reaction and the natural temperature of the exhaust gas is used to power a steam turbine, which in turn generates more electrical energy. All this energy is fed into the electric motor, driving the propeller in harmony with the thrust from the rigs and all that is emitted from the exhaust is clean, white vapour. But with our carbon capture system and heat recovery, we actually achieve true zero. So basically no CO2, no NOx, no SOx and no black soot, basically. So uh, the, 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 the exhaust fumes that are coming out of the back of the vessel are actually breathable. It's a wind-driven technology, so huge amounts obviously free and emission-free from the rigs coupled with the electric drive system and, and carbon capture for the small amount of fossil fuels that we do use. So truly not net zero, not planting trees, but really zero technology. Today, end plates have been added to the wings, an adjustment that is expected to deliver additional zero carbon thrust. With Southampton University postgraduate students assisting, smoke and ultraviolet light highlights the fluid dynamics that create a powerful side force. And in the control room, the results, as expected, are impressive. The tests today were really good. Windship Technology did some tests about a year ago, and at that point they didn't put end plates on these sails. And so this time round they looked at the effect of the end plates. And that's really encouraging, actually more than encouraging, 20% more side force. That side force should convert into 12 to 13 knot top speeds for any future windship powered vessels. Where we're targeting bulkers and tankers are burning sort of 25 tonnes of fuel a day. And that's emitting close to 100 tonnes of CO2 a day. That's so each ship? That's each ship. With our technology, on transoceanic routes, we, we need wind routes. Uh, we are down at seven to eight tonnes, and the fuel we use is therefore emission free. So just on a straight economics, we've cut two thirds of the fuel bill. And those projected savings come without loss of cargo capacity. There's also enough space to sail under some of the world's major bridges into port. The vertical wings drop down to 12 metres, lower than the clearance of many conventional ships. Could you apply any of this, this technology to an existing fleet? Rigs are fully retrofitable. You don't get the same savings that you can with the full drivetrain system, but we can still get 30 to 40% savings. So the first step is to get rigs on your ship. Um, retrofitting a drivetrain is a little harder, so we're probably looking at new build type for that.
Wind tunnel results and extensive computer modeling both indicate that ships that might one day use this innovative technology will be cheaper to run than conventional tonnage. It's potentially a compelling proposition. The worldwide IMO type legislation uh, will help encourage our shipping community, which is relatively conservative, um, as a lot of big areas are, to move in the right direction. So what began as the simple sketches of a former ocean racer and a blend of innovative engineering know-how has undergone rigorous refinement and scientific testing to become a cost-reducing, zero-carbon proposition, looking to take its place on our oceans and the front line of the war against climate change.